Hello folks, so today I have a question from 2008, May, June, uh, paper 2. In those days we didn't have variants, so only one variant. And number 6, I'm doing this on the request of one of my uh, students who asked me this question yesterday. But uh, in his, uh, uh, in, his uh, in, the, in the picture he sent, the, the uh, picture itself was not correct because uh, certain things were missing here. So this is the complete picture and also the way to solve it it says an electric heater consists of three similar heating elements uh, a b and c a b and c connected as shown in figure 6.1 so this is the figure so we have got a and b in series the whole arrangement is across this uh, voltage source uh, and is controlled by a uh, switch s1 and we have this uh, s2 also this s2 I can be switched on or off uh, to uh, to include this B in the circuit or also to avoid it. Uh, C is there uh, across this uh, resistor uh, controlled by the switch S3. Each heating element is rated as uh, 1.5 kilowatt to 40 watt. It's the rating of the heaters and may be assumed to have constant resistance. So for ease, uh, the resistance has been assumed to be constant. The circuit is connected to a 240 volt supply, 240 volt supply. So calculate the resistance of one heating element as we have uh, always stated in the classroom whenever the rating is given rating is given in terms of uh, watt and volt the first thing that we can do is we can have the idea about uh, about the resistance so the resistance of each element should be equal to v square by p p equal to v is a 240 so it's a square divided this p is power so 1.5 kilowatt is 1500 watt 1500 so this should be equal to should be equal to uh, 240 squared divided 1500 equal to so it is simply 38.4 watts oh i'm sorry 38.4 ohm so 38.4 so it, it, didn't, it didn't require that much space but still uh now in the second question we are being given the switches S1, S2, S3 can be open or closed. Switches S1, S2 and S3 can be open or closed. Yes, so switches are for that. Complete figure 6.2, that means this table. So we have to complete this table, this table, to show the total power dissipation of the heater, of the heater, for the switches in the positions included. So we vary the switches and we have to find the total power dissipation. So columns are given for S1, S2, S3 and the total power. The first is S1 open, S1 is open, S2 and S3 is closed, so S2 and S3 is closed. So now I use a pencil to show this thing. So S3 is closed, it connects and S2 is also closed, the first case. So in that sense what happens is, uh, current comes through here, S1 is open so current cannot flow here. And some might argue that uh, why what if it comes like this yeah it might come like this for for some nanosecond or picosecond but since there is gap here there is no flow so until charge arrives from here further cannot uh, further charges cannot come from here so that's why it may happen for picosecond or something like that but we are we are talking of a continuous current flow so flow doesn't happen that's why there is no loss through any of these things so the total power should be zero 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 now in number two in number two we have s1 is closed so s1 is closed s1 is closed then s2 is closed yes okay s3 is open so open means that i have to rub it s3 is open so now that means let us see what happens now current flows current flows here so it has got two paths whether to come through here or come through here so when there is zero resistance, it will come through here, come through here, and here, and here, like this. So current does not flow through here, flow through here, but it flows through here like this, then like this, and like this. And in this branch, we have got, this is open, so current does not flow through here. So that means in this whole thing, we have uh, A is working, B and C are not working. A is working, but B and C are not working. So that means that the connection will now be like this. So this is a 240 volt source. Uh, this is 240 volt source. The source, then like this. So we have got this A here. This is A and like this. So this is 
240 volt source so it means the PD across this A is 240 volt now according to the rating if there is 240 volt the power it uh, consumes should be 1.5 kilowatt so it should be 1.5 kilowatt 1.5 this is because this end of A is in direct connection with this so the PD across this thing is 240 volt 240 volt that's why 1.5 kilowatt now in another number let me rub this S1 is still clo still closed S1 is still closed closed then S2 is closed and uh, S3 also closed so there are all the switches are closed here so that means now I have to close this S3 as well so in that case uh, this is still intact so that's why the PD across A is 240 volt now since we have this connection as well so this connects to this end that's why PD across C is also 240 volt PD across C is also 240 volt so that means now the circuit will now be like this like this so it is a 240 volt source we have got this a and we have got this 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 this, this uh, c c this is c this is a like this so in both cases the pd is 240 volts so that means it will consume 1.5 kilowatt rating here it will consume 1.5 kilowatt so the total should be should be should be should be uh, when we total them it will be 3.0 kilowatts so it's because the PD across both of them is 240 volts now next number so these are done these are completed next is S1 is closed it's okay S2 is open is open and S3 is open so now the circuit is like this so both of these things open S2 is open and S3 is also open so in such case what happens is uh, current cannot flow through this because s3 is open so current cannot flow through this s2 is open so so that's why current has to flow through this flow through this no other way so that means now at this time current will flow through both a and b so the circuit will now be like this so it will be so this is a 240 volt source 240 volt so from here we'll have this is a and this is b this is b so a and b current does not flow through here doesn't fl flow through here so it has to flow through a and b so now a and b are similar heating elements which means that the resistances are equal if so by the voltage divided theorem the voltage here should be here should be half of 240 volt voltage should be half of 240 volt so that means the voltage here is 120 volt and 120 volts 120 volt and 120 volts now when voltage becomes half when voltage becomes half the power it consumes will be somewhat like this so p equal to v square by r r is same constant so when voltage uh, v proportional to v square for the same r so if voltage becomes half then power becomes 1 by 4 power becomes 1 by 4 so that's why this thing will consume consume 1 by 4 of 1 by 4 of this 1 by 5 which is equal to equal to so let's do in the calculator 0.25 which is 1 by 4 into 1.5 is 0 0.375 so it will consume 0 0.375 it will consume 0 0.375 and when we add both of them it will be equal to 0 0.75 so 0 0.75 watts so next <coughs> the next thing we have uh, yes one is closed close s2 is open yeah and s3 is closed so this means we have to close this thing this thing now in this condition all the resistors are active it's because current flows through here doesn't flow through here current flows through here as well so all the things are active but what happens is this arrangement still follows this thing this thing means uh, it will have half voltage half voltage which means the power is 0 0.375 0 0.375 total 1.5 it's okay total sorry 0 0.75 now the resistance the pd across this c is also also 240 volt so it will be it will be consuming 1.5 kilowatt so 
it will be having 1.5 these two are having in total uh, 0 0.75 so when we add this it becomes 5 2 and then 2 so 2.25 kilowatts so it should be 2.25 kilowatts so this is the uh, overall solution to this problem